Call for it to serve. Out. Out. 30 15. Nets. Fair service. Oh, yes. I thought that was in. I can understand why. Yeah. That looked like it was in. Very old. She lost the first set by six games to one. And she's already losing by two games to lob in the second set. 30 0. Out. 30 40. Another break point for the South African as Crawford looks to serve. Thirty forty. Oh yes, that was brilliant. That was absolutely brilliant on the part of Crawford to take this uh, game to deuce. Well done, Ruth Crawford, represented Ghana. She's giving it everything. She doesn't want to go down by three games love in the second set. Deuce. She appears to be struggling with her first serve. Advantage, Crawford. Hear the moans from the crowd. Back to this. She had a very fine opportunity to win this game. The back to this. Advantage Van Ziel. Crawford appears to be complaining about something. Not exactly sure what it is. Advantage Van Ziel. Crawford to serve. Ah. Oh. There's three games to love now. Advantage the South African. Van Ziel leads 6 1. Three games to lob in the second set. Game, Van Ziel. She leads three games to lob. The players take a breather and will be back on court shortly.
You're back. Oh. That's another poor one from Crawford. 15 lob. Van Ziel winning the first set 6 1 and leading the second set three games to lob. Out. 30 lob. An ace from Van Ziel, 40 lob. She's running away with the tie now. Van Ziel is running away with us, 40 lob. That's out. There's four games to lob now in second set. Van Ziel already leading the first set by six games to one. She's two games away from victory. Crawford to serve now. Yeah. Fifteen lob. Probably getting back into a groove now. But a bit too little, too late though. Carl Ford to serve. 30 love. Net. First service. Crawford will get a second bite of the cherry. Concentrated. Ah, oh. very old. Thirty fifteen, sorry. Crawford still seven. Thirty fifteen. She's down four games to lob in the second set. And lost the first set six games to one. Crawford disappointed that she's blown that point away. She gets to serve though. 30 0. Second serve, Crawford. Out. Forty thirty. An opportunity for Crawford to win her first game of the second set. Crawford to serve. 
Next. Second service. Oh, well done. Well done. Crawford finally wins a game in the second set. Just like she did in the first. Crawford representing Ghana. Finally wins a game in the second set. There's four games to one. Crawford losing the first game. Losing the first set, sorry. By six games to one. And she's now down four to one in the second set. We had to see highlights of what transpired in some of the games played earlier. Fanzil to serve. She would want to finish this off as soon as possible. Ooh. What a return from the South African. Well done, Vanzil. That point appeared lost there. Ah, that was absolutely fabulous from the South African. And there you can see the way she celebrates that point. Well done. Van Ziel, 15 lob. Did that go out? Yes, it did. 30 lob, Marie Van Ziel, South Africa. Teddy Lab Van Ziel. Fall. Second service, Van Ziel. A brilliant return there, and the fans would applaud that. The fans would applaud that from Crawford 30 15. That was brilliant from Crawford. A brilliant return, Van Zeeland serve. That's out. 40 15. Two game points for Van Ziel. Next. Second service. Van Ziel to serve, 
40-30 Van Ziel. Seven to win the game. Game, Van Ziel. Van Ziel leads second set five games to one. That was way out of court. Way out of court now. It's five games to one. Second set, Van Ziel from the Republic of South Africa leads thus. Crawford serving to stay in the game. Fifteen lap advantage, Crawford. Fifteen. Crawford seven to stay in this game. She loses this game, and the match is over. Thirty fifteen. Crawford. Fault. Crawford appears dismayed with that call. Berio. Van Ziel, two points away from victory. Berio, Crawford to serve. Next, 40-30, Crawford. Crawford could possibly win her second game of the set. 40-30, Crawford. That went long. Second service, 40 30, Crawford. Out. Was that in? Well, that went in. So Crawford winning his second game. Is now five games to two. She won one game in the first set and has now won two games in the second set. Well done. Van Zio leads five games to two, second set, having already won the first set by six games to one.
Crawford to serve. She leads five games to two. That was an ace. And what a way to start the game. 15 love. Come on, she says. Oh, brilliant. Oh, brilliant. What a backhand return from Crawford. Sorry, from Van Ziel. What a backhand return. That was absolutely brilliant from the South African. She leads very loud. Two points away from victory for the South African. Very loud. Out. 40 lap. There's now three match points. Just set points and match points. Because she finished it off. Fall. Fair service. Crawford. Second service. <laughs> it is game, set, and match for Crawford. She wins in two straight sets. Sets one, six two. Well done. Marie Van Ziel. Better luck. Ruth Crawford from Ghana. Well done. Marie Van Ziel. She wins in two straight sets. Six one, six two. special in your own way like no other thank you mom for letting me know i'm special and for making me my special indomie thank you mommy i love my indomie this advert is fda messy munches play dirty busy fighters take a moment and intensify it because when snacking is under attack we'll be there to fight back snack in the name of play Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play. You like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique finger? <laughs> their own unique talents and abilities. I can cook, I can paint. You like no other. You like no other. So every day, 
in whatever you do. Remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mom. I love my Indomie. This advert is FDA approved. So it is one more sleep before the field and the drugs are busy for the African Games and all the athletes now I'm sure will be under that pressure to step out in this very fantastic arena and compete for the best of the best of gold and silver and bronze. Plenty building up, coming up to the drug and field events. Meanwhile, there's still plenty happening around the African Games in Volleyball, beach volleyball, it's happening in tennis and playing. So we'll give you all the loader, we'll give you all the breakdown. Coming up with me on the show is Sami Batal. Sami, good to have you again on the show. It's always a pleasure to be here. Yeah, fascinating this stuff. Well, earlier today, Ghana be charged to progress into the quarterfinal of volleyball. One more step to take them into the medal places. Absolutely. I mean, this team has been quite consistent. Um, I remember watching them in their first game against Gambia, where after a tentative start, they put their, you know, their stamp of authority over it. And it's good to see how consistent they have been. And, you know, they have been helped a lot by the fans who have showed up. So mm. bring on the quarterfinal and let's see who they face. Absolutely. So in, right after the quarterfinal, if they win that, they got into the semis. And from that point in, no medal is untouchable and reachable by, by that group. Yeah, I mean, especially because they, they didn't medal in Rabat, although Ghana participated and they haven't, you know, medaled in this event. So... Um, this will be a, you know, a crucial shot in the arm for um, Ghana Volleyball if the men are able to make it to not just the semi-final but to pick up a medal. All right, so after the victory, we caught up with Ghana's uh, volleyball captain, Paul Akan. He had this to say. Um, the next game, we are hoping uh, maybe within the table, um, after the table is being drawn, maybe likely we'll be playing Nigeria. So the Nigerians are looking out for you. Yes, we are also waiting for them because this one will be... Uh, a, a banter of Jolof, and then we see the one who Jolof is with. <laughs> oh, Ghanaians and Nigerians, they go everywhere with the Ghana <laughs> Jolof and Nigeria Jolof issue. They are hoping to clash in volleyball so that they can start to their difference on the court and still get on with the Jolof thing. <laughs> Ghanaians <laughs> and Nigerians, you know, we call ourselves frenemies, um, yeah. eternal rivals and sub regional, you know, um, friends as well. So, yeah, bring on the Nigerians. Nigerians have had a good start. To this competition as well i think it will be one fiery encounter mm, looking forward to that anyway but he's also then a beach volleyball player that that, that is so, um, last time i asked um a volleyball player what the similarities were um she spoke about she spoke about the fact that the beach volleyball is more difficult obviously sun normally is okay, of course it's two with the same measurements as the main so you're covering more but when you have somebody who's competing in beach volleyball and can play it so well, maybe is that an advantage when it comes to the court where you have more team members? Well, I mean, the differences are quite fundamental. Yeah. You, 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 you mentioned the fact that they are playing in a beach. Uh, conditions are completely different. Yeah. One is indoor, mm. where temperature is regulated. One is outdoor, where you have no control over the temperature. Yeah. And <laughs> if you are not wearing appropriate, um, you know, apparel and protecting your feet as well, you fee feel the heat. Yeah. And very often you have pitch volleyball partnerships of two who are who know each other very well and are quite consistent and, and they work around those lines but in the the court volleyball the indoor volleyball you mentioned the fact that it's a bigger team yeah um working with each other and the dynamics tend to be completely um different yeah. whereas two people may not be able to stop one ball or the other in the indoor game especially when you have um, your liberal in the middle who is able to pick up the balls that the teamwork requires, you know, greater coordination yeah. among the set. Yeah. All right, so away from volleyball then, let's talk some tennis where Abraham Asaba against Benjamin Locke. It's, it's the Ghanaian man who today I think is the only Ghanaian man to have progressed from, from for his game. And in this game, it was the Ghanaian who came up as the winner. Um, it was an interesting miss. You know, Asaba is, uh, was named by sports writers as the best tennis player in Ghana in 2023. Yeah. Um, Locke. Um, from Zimbabwe came into this quite optimistic at the you know at the beginning of the contest it looks like 
it looked like this was going to um, go all the way. But the fundamental difference was Asaba had a big serve that Locke struggled to deal with. And Locke unfortunately committed too many and forced errors and double fought. So yeah. essentially, there were some games where you thought Locke should have been able to win. And unfortunately for him as well, there were some calls that he disagreed with the umpire about and kept arguing with the umpire, and it, it affected his game. He lost his composure and started swinging wildly. So he didn't do himself too many honors today. However, we shouldn't take anything away from Asaba. He played quite consistently and shut it out in two sets. And that's the thing about tennis. It's, 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 it's not like you've got a teammate who... When you are struggling, means something can pull you along. It's you and maybe your coaches, but it's only you on the court. If you lose that momentum and that concentration, you're done. And as you mentioned, kept arguing with officials or yeah. the umpire about calls. Yeah. And in the end, maybe just lost focus. I think this could have gone to three sets if Locke had kept his composure. There were periods in the game where I felt that, you know, he, he was the better player. Yeah. Unfortunately, when your composure falls apart on the tennis court, you're likely to make a lot of unforced errors. Mm. And I, the, the other factor, really, I thought was that he, he struggled with the humidity and the heat mm. at some point, mm. you know, finishing a very big bottle of water. And, um, but kudos to the Ghanaian for moving on because quite a number of the Ghanaian uh, tennis players uh, fell out of the competition yesterday and today. So yeah. let's see how far Asaba can go. But better right. luck to... Um, Lock next time. All right, so all the best to Asaba in how far he can go. Can he get to medal places? And for Lock, it's as better luck next time. Of course, his talent, his talent and his quality was no in doubt, but it wasn't to be for him today. It is a story about tennis. One bad day is the end for you in the, in the tournament. There's, there's no way back. There's no second chance in any competition. You have that one bad day. It doesn't matter how good you are. Just have that one bad game. And that's the end of that competition for you. Anyway, in hockey as well, Ghana men win against Nigeria. Well, the Jollof fight was settled in that context. It was 1-0 in the end. Ghana beat yeah, Nigeria. Yeah, I, I, I commentated on that encounter. For most part of the game, uh, the two teams cancelled out each other. Although I have to admit, the Nigerians played better than the Ghanaians. They created more chances. And Ghana's goalkeeper, Benjamin, was the man of the match. Ooh. He had to make up to about four crucial saves to keep out the Nigerians. And just when it seemed as if this was going to end up in a goalless draw. The Ghanaians went and then scored that crucial goal. Nigeria had less than four minutes to react. They couldn't react. The Ghanaians held on to win. Yeah, late one there. Stunning. Yeah. Uh, Nigeria and Ghana win by just one in that one. Also in women hockey, this one was emphatic as Ghanaian women beat Kenya by 4-1. to one. And the wins will count for more in the current format because in the women, there are just three teams that are playing now with the withdrawal of South Africa from the competition. And so everybody's going to get a medal. It's yeah. about sorting out who gets who that gets medal. What? And that win by Ghana puts them in pole position for that. Just as in the men's event, unfortunately, out of four teams, somebody will go home empty-handed. Yeah. And so getting a win is extremely crucial um, to putting your noses in front. So congratulations to the Ghanaian ladies um, on that. Mm. All right, so there you see the goal coming in is the captain who was on a fast take to just poke home what was uh, from close range to, to get Ghana going there, winning by 4-1. to one. Meanwhile, we, we are the hockey place that we caught up with uh, Ghana's goalkeeper in the women's category, Abigail Boy. This is a feature coming from Kosi Andele. I'm Abigail Mele Boy. I'm a police officer and I'm a goalkeeper for police team and the national team. I've been playing hockey at the age of 19 years after I completed the SS. At school, I used to do short put and later they were going to play hockey, but they don't have a goalkeeper. So I just told them that I want to be in the pool. At first, when I came to the hockey stadium, I was looking at the goalkeepers who are keeping for the national team. I found interest, so I decided to use it as my career, to be part of the national hockey team for Ghana. I feel very privileged. Last year in South Africa, Kenya scored us two times, so they think when they are coming to the All African Games, they have to score us again. But we will plan for them. And today we got the three points. My message to the young athletes who want to be part of the hockey family. The hockey is not a scary game. It's very interesting. 
I love everything about hockey because I love the game. I'm going for good. Yeah, that's a pure case of revenge there on Kenya. Kenya beat them the last time twice. It was clearly on their minds, but of course also motivating to many young athletes who would want to compete at this level for their countries. What a story. For Kenya beat Ghana in the group stages and beat Ghana in the classification yeah. stages. It's good to know that they never forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> As they went in, but you know, they were, they were value for money um, on, on, on this. And I think th this match was the first match played on the newly lead mm -hmm. um, TEF. And the Which players, good, must, yeah, must and, and, and given that the players hadn't really had prior uh, practice on this, they took to it like fish to water mm. and um, made things really uncomfortable for the Kenyans. So, congratulations to them, yeah. and um, hopefully, they can keep advancing and fulfill their dream of winning gold in this competition. Not that it will be easy, absolutely. So, so as, as Sammy already explained, the three teams are competing in the women's uh, category in, in hockey with South Africa already withdrawing from it. So yeah, it's a matter of who wins which medal. Yeah. Ghana will surely get a medal. It's going to be gold, it's going to be silver, it's going to be bronze. We shall see. Meanwhile, for the men, the victory against Nigeria is important because one team is winning nothing. The three others will have to share which medal they win. So there's plenty to, to battle, to play for as far as hockey is concerned. Meanwhile, one of the athletes that Ghanaians were looking forward to coming into this competition in boxing is Samuel Techi yeah. because in the last Commonwealth game, he brought so much joy to Ghanaians. He fought and he won today to progress. Well, yeah, as we were discussing earlier, the referee stopped the scheduled bout uh, because the opponent from um, Egypt, Morocco, the Morocco, yeah, yeah Medi, opponent from Morocco, yeah. Medi Bershan, could not defend himself anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's the superior experience um, for Techi that counted much. But I've, I said this last night, and I'll repeat this again. The atmosphere at the Bukum Boxing Arena is unlike any I've experienced in amateur boxing. And, um, I mean, it became a slack fest very early on. Moroccan dropped his guard, and, you know, Samo Tichi managed to land a few shots, and he couldn't defend himself, and rightfully so, the referee stopped the game. Remember also that he's just coming from Italy, where he, called, he participated in the Olympic qualification tournament. Yeah. So, superior experience, he advances, but he should not drop down his guard, yeah. because every boxer who's coming to this tournament here is intent on ensuring that the Ghanaians do not use home advantage against them. Absolutely. So, when Tichi, who's got some experience under those gloves, will be hoping not to drop his guard, because Ghanaians, he's one of those that Ghanaians are looking up to, to deliver some medals. Meanwhile, one of the ladies we caught up with in our feature that we showed you yesterday in Quay is also very much going to be in action very soon, and she's coming up against uh, Morocco's Butaki. And she is very much one of the few ladies, you know, inspiring women to get involved into boxing in Ghana. And there she is, as we speak. She's going to get into the ring and she's going to get into her bouts. Yeah. Do you know what the best way? Ghanaians are counting on the women advancing just to strengthen the case for the promotion of women's boxing. Appeal lost on, on the first day. So we'll be back in Kwe. We'll be back in uh, Janet Aqua. Yeah. Remember, also, yeah. who was also in that feature. And all the other lady boxers to advance and win medals for Ghana. Absolutely. So, all right, so then let's take a look at what is to come tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be exciting. Take a look at it. So there is still boxing, there is volleyball, there is handball, there is taekwondo, there is athletics. Mm. With the greatest respect to all disciplines, but I think uh, <laughs> many people across the continent have been longing now to see athletics. And like I said earlier, after one more sleep, they get to see what they really want to see track and field events happening. Athletics is a blue chip event for any multi-sport event. <laughs> In fact, sometimes people would think that the multi-sport events are all taking place in the stadiums because they've become used to seeing yeah. athletics on their screen. So 
we can't wait for Monday to commence mm. with the athletics event. Fascinating. Anyway, then, all the athletes as well can't wait, but they are putting in great shifts of work to get themselves in big condition to compete at the African Games here in Accra. We caught up in how they are training, how they are gearing up to come into the Games. So, yeah, let's take a look at our athletes and how they are faring coming into the Games tomorrow. Athletics is a major sporting discipline at the African Games. Ghanaians look up to winning some silverware as Ghana is the defending champions for 4x100 relay and high jump. In preparation to the upcoming athletics with the new athletics tracks, Coach Salama Tumusa is optimistic Team Ghana will raise the flag of Ghana high. There's a saying, Coaches have only 20% influence on athletes. The 80% depend on them, in which we are also cycling them to also accept and intrinsically motivate themselves so that whatever workout we give them, if they do it wholeheartedly, they will get the results. 2019 4 by 100 relay champion Martin Owusu Entry calls on family and Ghanaians to come support Team Ghana at the Legon Sports. Complex. Yeah, I mean, it's always fun running in front of your home crowd, our families. We put in this work to make sure our families are happy. Uh, Ghanaians are happy as well, so it's, it's a big occasion for us to make sure as defending champions we come here and um, we defend our title. So, yeah. Pressure make diamonds and we want to shine, so we're here for whatever. Whoever comes, we're running. It's our home turf, so bring it on. With a mixture of both foreign and local based athletes, Benjamin Azamati explains how he is imparting his colleagues with knowledge from the Olympics and other high-profile championships. I've been in touch with most of them, Safo, Garayi and the other ones. Uh, it's mostly about, you know, just sharing our thoughts on how certain things are being done. We just share, share our experiences together with them and um, when we had the call up and when you saw the list, we touch base with some of them here and then they were happy to you know welcome us and happy to you know train with us again. Team Ghana hope for athletics is very high and do hope that they bring home some medals. All right, so there you see them getting ready and getting into their stride to be prepared for what is to come tomorrow. And yeah, it's a big deal, especially for Ghanaian athletes. They've competed across the world. Ghanaians have supported them from, from distance. Now Ghanaians are going to support them from close range, and that is going to be something else. Yeah, I, yesterday I was privileged enough to mingle a bit with them, and I can tell you they are ready. Everybody keeps reminding them that they have running here in Ghana, they have home advantage, they have people out here to support them. The rest is up to them. And, and as I, I, I say with athletes, we can only do so much. The rest is up to them. And they know exactly what is at stake. And so we just have to give them the space to go out there from tomorrow um, and perform. And there are some interesting battles. It's good to see them, you know, practicing the baton change. Yeah. We all know how crucial yeah. that is. Ooh, ooh. Um, because Ghana is banging its hopes on the 4 by 100 relays yeah. for both yeah. women and men. Remember that Ghana is not only the defending champions in the 4 by 100 meters. Ghana has the games record, record. in yeah. the 4 by 100. It's only one of only three records that are held by Ghanaians in the all African, African games. games yeah. We get more records here on this Mundo track and on the field. We will see. But I, I really hope we do because you look at the triple jumps from 1987, Francis Dodu, Dodu yeah. the heptathlon from 2007 in Algeria by um, uh, Margaret Simpson, and then this 4 by 100 So hopefully everything clicks into place mm. and then Ghana wins. There are also scores to settle. I remember talking to Rosalind Amo who mentioned that Deji Alu, who was in the Nigeria 4x100 meters team yeah. in 2003, is now coaching the Nigerian sprint team. Ooh. And he reminded them how Ghana went and spoiled the party in Nigeria. Because Nigeria was set to win the 4x100. Yeah. They had one of the best ever relay teams. And guess what? Ghana, Ghana. caught by Leo Miles Mills, Coast in 2003 and wins it. Mm. So now Nigerians have come to say it's payback time. Payback time in Ghana. And Ghana will not have it easy. And that, that takes me to the next thing now. I mean, a lot of focusing on, on Ghana because of its recent yeah. record and its recent performance in the African game that we saw. But now other com other countries as well would ha have very good athletes coming through. So it's not it's not going to be an easy easy easy. No. easy but, I mean, it's not a walk in the park. Yeah. Take Kenya, for instance. Kenya is coming with 52 athletes, or they have come here with 52 athletes after their national championships um, earlier in the month. 
Kenya won 11 goals at the 2019 tournament uh, in Rabat. 10 out of the nine, the, the 11, 11 gold medals were won in athletics. Yeah. So the Kenyans are not here to be mere passengers. They have Mary Mora, Beatrice Kipchoek, and uh, Abel Kipsang in 1,500 meters who are here. Of course, we know that it will be from 400 upwards. <laughs> you don't want to <laughs> yeah, compete with the Kenyans. Be, yeah. so the Kenyans are here. Nigeria are bringing 54 athletes. Yeah. And you know, led by Tobia Musan, they've got S, um, S. Broom, mm. who, who who is in this, and they've got a few more athletes. So every country is coming here to try to win something. So right. it won't be a walk in the park for the Ghanaians, but I think they know what is at stake. Their families will be here, and they are determined to set a mark for themselves individually and collectively. On home tracks. All right, so then, like I said, it's one more sleep, and we start racing, we start throwing, we start jumping in the all-new, beautiful University of Ghana Stadium right sets for the game. Sami, thank you very much for today. Enjoy your refuel, repackage, shape up. Tomorrow, you're in commentary again, so Let yeah. Show uh, Africa is ready for what is coming. In the African field, thank you for enjoy. We did tell you that there's a place where dreams come alive, where the rhythms of the land feel. From every corner of Ghana, voices unite in a resounding call. The time is up. The African Games 2023 comes to our shores. Join us as we celebrate the unity of our continent through the power of sport. Experience the African dream. Try it first. This advert is FDA approved. Every child is Night in a resounding call. The time is up. The African Games 2023 comes to our shores. Join us as we celebrate the unity of our continent through the power of sport. Experience the African dream. So, it's Ramatukwe of Ghana against the rainy silver medalist of the Africa Games Women Boxing 
light flyweight division. And we have judges from our referees from Zambia. The five judges are from Cameroon, Congo, DR, Uganda, Gabon, and Zimbabwe. So you can see Ramatu Kwe in the red very eagerly anticipating the opponent. She her stance appears very oh there goes Ramatu as Yasmin Mutakli Mutaki attempted to and the Moroccan goes for double combination is there. Her experience showing the Ghanaian of course fired out by yet to throw a serious punch. She throws one left jab there, but the Moroccan goes to work. And she is adopting the same strategy we saw the Odiran just execute in the last fight. Just getting away from the opponent by coming forward and hit, getting a punch in, then retreating again before going for the offense again. And you can see Mutaki dishing out some hefty punches to the Ghanaian. Mutaki, very experienced. And she's showing it here this early in this fight. Fight continues here. Round number one. Ramatu Kwe, so very, very fired up, so gingered up, but it's one thing to be, as they say, the soul is willing, but the body is weak. Because so far, if you ask me, is the broken who has been dominant this early very tactical not so much fancy full work from her but she just stays back and once she attacks she gets good punches in as Ramatu tries to you know connect some few punches here fight continues Ramatu crew of Ghana in the red against Yasmin Mutaki of Morocco in the blue. The Ghanaian, who previously campaigned at the 2015 Africa Games, hopes to up her game and potentially manage victory for Ghana here is the quarterfinal two of women's light flyweight boxing of Accra 2023 Africa Games. That's romantic way to coach Ifori Asari in the corner after the end of round one there. As we, 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 we watch highlights of this action and as the highlights you can see the Moroccan executing punishing the Ghanaian and by that the judges all are in agreement that Yasmin Mutaki edged that round one and it's a 5-0 verdict at the end of round one in favor of the Moroccan. Coach Asari and Francado still attending to Raman Tukwe as she prepares She's receiving some instructions from Coach Asari to go into this round two and do very well. Some dignitaries of Ghana boxing at ringside, where who, some of them you can't see on your shots, on your screens, on your screen, that's it, that is, sorry. Coach Kaloko, the uh, Ghana Boxing Authority, executive member and head trainer of the Bronx Boxing Gym here with Dodi Keme, former IBF Africa World Cup champion, who will be fighting again in Accra on 30th March. But the action continues here in round number two. Is Ramatu of Ghana up against the Moroccan with Ramatu? tries to attack her opponent but wouldn't even get close and the Moroccan comes in hard again but Ramatu manages to you know 
maintain her stance and the Ghanaian cannot even get a point to land on the opponent who has the height and reach advantage which she's using to perfection and there you see Ramatu again walking to another point of Mutaki the Moroccan is detecting the pace and there she lands another powerful right Ramatu counters but the Ghanaian will still not hit round two Ramatu Kwe of Ghana up against Yasmin Mutaki of Morocco and the Ghanaian once again attacks but a point will not get to the opponent. It's a frustrating evening here for Ghana as the Moroccan. This is another hefty point there. It's all Yasmin Mutaki and she goes in powerfully once again. Rama Tukwe of Ghana in a big trouble here. She needs a very big, you know, turning point in this fight to actually stand a chance of giving the home fans the, 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 the victory they so much in. She has a crowd behind her, but unfortunately, she has met a tough customer in Yasmin Mutaki. And Mutaki again with another power punch there. As the Ghanaian edge closer to potentially, you know, also scoring some points here. It's still round two with barely 10 seconds to go. Oh, Ramatu finally gets a point to Conan there, but wouldn't follow up as the Moroccan once again attacks the Ghanaian. And there goes the bell for the end of round two. It was no easy round again for Ramatu. And again, it's another comprehensive 5 0 result for the Moroccan as we watch the highlights from that round number two. It's women's large flyweight quarterfinals just one victory here and you are in the medal zone and your name will go down in Ghanaian folklore Africa Games Accra 2023 medalist but Ramatu Kwe is up against it she is in against a very tough customer in Yasmin Mutaki of Morocco the silver medalist of this very division in the last Africa Games held in her country of Morocco, Rabat precisely in 2019. Ramatu of Ghana in the red lands a powerful punch there, but she cannot continue with multiple combinations as Mutaki once again starts to go to work. Ramatu often on the attack there she goes again and once again the referee intervenes and issues some little instructions to the Ghanaian there and urges the two boxers to continue and the Moroccan once again on the attack oh two different multiple punches there to the face of Ghana's Ramatu Kwe who definitely has no answer here it's a tough tough night for Ramatu Kwe. She definitely is in high spirits, motivated to do her best, but as things stand, her best certainly shall not enough against Yasmin Mutaki here at the Bukum Boxing Arena, just across from her hometown of Bukum, Accra, Ghana. Ramatu takes some few body shots to the opponent there in an attempt to also score some few points. She goes on attack once again, but because of the disparity in height, anytime she gets closer, it's 
ends in an entanglement or rather a receipt or a receipt of punishment from the Moroccan as we enter the final one minute of this fight Ramatukwe still in a very difficult position can the Ghanaian deliver a knockout punch here to run away with the surprise victory referee delays a bit before urging the boxers to continue with the action as Ramatukwe chases her opponent around knowing very well that she needs a power point to floor the Moroccan who goes on the offensive again against the Ghanaian dishing out some punishment to Ramatukwe. Yasmin Yasmin Mutaki the bronze medalist from last year's world championship held in Uzbekistan so obviously she is very very experienced and also she is the African champion and there goes the bell for the end of the fight and the Ghanaian fans are very very subdued nobody needs to tell them that it was not a good business out there for Ramatu Kwe. Jojo, what's your view about Ramatu's performance? Well, I think uh, Ramatu, in my opinion, did well compared to what I saw her previously doing in Dakar, Senegal. Uh, she fought against a very you know, formidable and credible opponent in the, in the name of Yasmin Otaki, who is the bronze medalist. Mutaki was Yasmin Morocco. As expected, Ramatukwe of Ghana's competition here at the 2023 Africa Games in her hometown of Accra, Ghana, has come to an end. She put up a very brief performance, but in the end, it was just not good enough as we watch the highlights of some land. Ramatu so actually landed some food, which is there. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a flyway to be sure. Exactly. Punishing the Ghanaian there on a route to a comprehensive 5-0 victory. Like I'm saying, Yasmin, you know, is it's, it's, it's quite qualified. Though she lost at Dakar Senegal to the individual champion, she fought at the flyweight. She has qualified to, uh, how do you call it, uh, Paris 2024 by virtue of playing second and she's the the, the bronze medalist at the last woman uh, uh, individual championship in India last year and also the current African champion and was also at the 2015 you know African Games in Congo Brazil where she was uh, how do you call it uh, 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 quarter finalist and she keeps having more opportunities to participate in to be prepared very very well very formidable opponent that's against Ramatu, a police officer in ghana <laughs> who you know that the issues with women women boxing in ghana i think in my opinion Ramatu is not a disgrace she has she has really done her best from the communications officer of the ghana boxing federation they manage the black heaters and bombers and of course manage Ramatu Kwe who just finished and he has acknowledged that Ramatu Kwe actually did very well. She put up a great performance but it was just good enough against a very formidable and strong opponent like Yasmin Taki, very experienced dating back to 2015 Africa game she was competing at the top level and getting to the quarter finals there came to the last Africa games held in the country won silver went to the world championship to join and as Yogi told you she's qualified to Paris 2024 Olympics to represent her country the world Cup. so we get set for our third fight in this evening session it's also a quarter finals in women's 50 kilogram category which is the light flyweight of women 
is between Tan Bugwetu, Matiba of South Africa in the red corner against Zainab Adeshina of Nigeria in the blue corner. the bell for the commencement of this action here. Light flyweight women quarterfinals three of Accra 2023 boxing. South Africa in the red corner against Nigeria in the blue corner. The South African goes on the offensive by the Nigerian still back and lands a very smart left jab, right jab from Adeshina who has is, appears to be very skillful and you know very very tactical and you know prepared and goes chasing the opponent and lands another powerful left there the Nigerian in blue Zainab Adeshina they call her the woman from Nigeria in West Africa taking on the Southern African opponent turned the way to Mafiba of South Africa we still in round one. And a, a nice left uppercut here from the South African. But the Nigerian takes control here, dishing out a few punches. And she has, you can see the Nigerian fans in the background cheering her on. It's a good right there from Adeshina, which just caught. Matiba. We continue here in round one. South Africa in the red receiving some punishment from the woman in blue from Nigeria. And it's another left chap there from the Nigerian. She goes into business once again. Oh, nice job there from the South African as she backpedaled. It's still a close affair here at the Brooklyn Boxing Arena. Round one and the South African is beating some, you know, Food skills and avoiding the pointings of her opponent in the process, but Adeshina Zainab of Nigeria will keep coming forward. Fight continues here. Zainab Adeshina in the blue from Nigeria, and that's the end of our one. You can see the Nigerian supporters in the background flying the Nigerian flag and apparently I believe they are even athletes because they have the accreditation tasks around their necks so they are cheering on Adeshina whom you can see receiving you know treatment from her corner in preparation for the second stanza that we once again see the highlights from round one As you can see, it was Adeshina who was, you know, very tactically landing the better punches, the cleaner shots, and the ones on target, as you can see here. And for that reason, the referees, sorry, the judges, comprehensively have ruled that the Nigerian won that first round 5-0. So the action continues here as the bell sounds for the commencement of round number two. The referee pushing the two boxers to continue the fight here. It's another powerful left and right from 
Adesina, the Nigerian. The South African Matiba tries to fight back, but is then caught by Adesina. But the fight will continue. The Nigerian is making all the noise in the background as their counterpart takes control of the fight here. Fight number three of this evening's session at Accra 2023. Matiba with some few punches there, but Adesina is riding through it and also landing some of her own. And the South African has no choice than to retreat as the Nigerian once again comes forward with some punishment. South Africa's Matiba in the red against Zainab Adeshina of Nigeria. Women's light flyweight, 50 kg that is. And that was another powerful right shot to the face of the South African who takes another one there. The Nigerian dominating this fight. And there you see him land another powerful one to the face of the South African there. Uh, that was a punch that the referee, I thought, should have given a standing count for. And there goes, down goes the South African. But apparently it's not a knockdown. As referee rules it asleep. But if you ask me, I thought she met the punch of the Nigerian there. Fight continues here in round number two. Adesina still on the attack as Matiba tries to fight back and she lands a good right there, which appeared to have shake, shaken the Nigerian. But the fight still continues. Adesina goes on the offensive with a oh, nice skill set there from the Nigerian. But the South African is fighting back at this point. Another attempt there from the South African that will not land and that brings us to the end of the second round. Women's light flyweight fight number three of the quarterfinal stage. The winner here gets through to the medal zone, but the loser of course will only go home and come to try again another time. You can see the South African corner issuing some instructions to Matiba as she ventures into the final stanza trailing by 0-10 on all judges scorecards. The second round has also been ruled a 5-3, a 5-0 round, sorry, for the Nigerian. In fact, the Tunisian judge who scored a round 1-10-8 for Adesina of Nigeria has done the same thing in this round two, scoring it 10 8 again for the Nigerian who is leading very comprehensively at this stage. To follow this fight will be the last quarter finals of the women's 50 kg category, which will feature Liberia's Grazina Van Bule against Habiba Ali of Egypt. Meanwhile, Matiba receives a standing count from the referee in this round number three. It's a, a boxing clinic being put up by Zainab Adeshina, the fighter from Nigeria. Adeshina still on the offensive, still attacking, still punishing Matiba. She has her eyes fixed on the semi-final spot and nothing will prevent her from doing that tonight here as she lands another nice right jab to the chin of South Africa's Matiba who continues to be cornered and receive punishment here necessitating 
the referee to intervene once again, but that was just to let tell him to raise up his head. Her head, sorry. Fight continues here. At the Pukum Boxing right now in the Ghana capital. Round three. Women's flyweight quarterfinal fight number three. And the Nigerian goes on the offensive. The Nigerian who has dominated all of these fights so far and leads comfortably on the judges' forecast. Still dominating and punishing her opponent in round number three here. Zainab Adeshina is obviously, definitely a name to watch out for in African women boxing for many years to come. A slick Nigerian. Ace in cruise control here. Adam Bukumbo Arena. There he, she goes again as we enter the final 40 seconds of this fight. Zainab. Adeshina. Putting up a show here. As the fight we till down to the final seconds here. Fight number 61 of Accra 2023 boxing competition. But the third of two nice action. And there goes the bell for the end and the stanza, the fight here, and you will see Adesina in your shot now. The young lady who hit a plethora of punishment on the other young lady you are seeing in your picture at this moment from South Africa who fought in the red corner and we will get the official verdict now. Now the result. The winner of this bout is on point by 5-0. to zero. Blue Adesina Zaina Nigeria declared winner. So, as was clearly demonstrated during the fight, it's a comprehensive 5-0 victory for the Nigerian. So the three light flyweight women's quarterfinals we have so far has seen the woman fighting out of the blue corner win comprehensively 5-0 all three fights as we await the final of the four quarterfinals here which will feature the librarian, Grezina Van Bule against the Egyptian Habiba Ali, who will be fighting out of the blue corner. His women's 50 kilogram quarterfinal four. Three semi finalists have already been determined in this particular phase. And now, please, let's welcome the boxer out of the red corner. Van Bule, So we continue the action here as we await the arrival of the two fighters for our next fight here this evening. Ali Habiba from Egypt. So Liberia versus Egypt is the very nice fight here at Accra 2023. So it's Egypt versus Liberia.
So we get ready to commence this fight number four of the evening session. Accra 2023 boxing here at the Bukum Boxing Arena in the Ghanaian capital, Accra. The action gets underway between Grezina Fambule of Liberia in the red against Habiba Ali of Egypt in the blue. Liberian in the red clinches this early at the Egyptian and the Egyptian lands a good jab to the face there that will surely score a point as they separated and the Liberian obviously wasn't protecting herself there but it's a good left jab from the Liberian who is exhibiting you know great footwork inside the ring with a power punch there. Oh, Liberia's Grey Zina Fambule in the red seems to be very tactical with her punching. She's landing some good punches here, but Egyptian will not go away as we've seen so far from these North African boxers in Accra 2023. They are very durable, they are very strong, they are very tactical, and they are very disciplined. Down. The Liberian surprise the Egyptian Habiba Ali as we've seen round one so far. Some nice look good jabs from the Liberian as she tries to withstand the pressure of the woman from Egypt. Liberia's Fanbule in the red, you know, holding out her own thus far in this fight. The action continues. And Habiba Ali tries to land one which will not go. So the action continues here and women's life flyweight. Women's flyweight quarterfinal four who joins the three already qualified for the semi-finals. And of course, Ghanans, Ramatukwe, remember, just failed to go past her Moroccan opponent and this is out of competition here. She needed the victory to just get into the medal zone. So there you go, the highlights of that round one, and it's a 3-2, you know, ruling by the ref, the judges, sorry, every time I have to mention our judges, I always remember the referee first, it's a 3-2 lead for the Liberian at the end of round number one. Two underway. Here yeah, at the Bukum Boxing Arena. It's women's light flyweight division. And three semi finalists have already been decided. And now, Liberia's 
Grace Zina Fambule trying to salvage her country's nation here. She actually is the only Liberian woman competing for her country in Accra with all three of their men fighters already eliminated. Can she move ahead into the medal zone and give Liberia a medal in boxing? You remember one of the Liberians, Jerosen, was handed a beating of his life by Ghana's Joseph Jaguar Komi yesterday. And Komi has pledged to go all the way and win the ultimate, which is gold in men's lightweight division here in Accra 2023. But the action continues between Grazina Fambule of Liberia and Habiba Ali in the blue corner. The woman from Egypt who goes on the offensive there lands a couple of shots to the head of the opponent by Fambule is a woman on a mission here in Accra. She is on a mission to make Liberians proud. The action continues without abatement here in Bukum, the heartbeat of Ghana boxing. So many world champions. They have produced from this environs. And again, most of the bosses representing Ghana in this competition all hail from around, most of them hail from around this environment, this community where we just have in this show. And the referee apparently tried to intervene, but has, you know, giving the go ahead for the fight to continue. And the powerful right there from the Liberian catches the Tunisian, the Egyptian, sorry, straight in the face. And she gets a warning to not hit the back of her opponent as we conclude round number two. And Liberian Grazina Fanhule, she looks very athletic for a lady that tells you she is really invested in this sport and very, very physically strong looking as we watch Habiba Ali of Egypt's corner, you know, getting her ready for the final round here. And it's another, it was another 3-2 round for the man from Liberia. The lady from Liberia, sorry, that is Grace Zina Fanbule, as she fights against Habiba Ali. So she won the first round 3 2, and she's run away with the second round 2 3 2, as round 3 begins here. And Habiba Ali, perhaps knowing that she's drilling on the scorecards, is going all out here in round number three. But the combative Grace Zina Fambule is still standing strong and she lands another good punch there she goes again into business and again and again it's after 2023 Women's flyweight, light flyweight, that is 50 kg, quarter final four, three semi finalists already decided. Who goes through to face 
Zainab Adesina of Nigeria in the semi-finals. The action continues here. At the Buku Boxing Arena, where Ghana has been hosting the boxing action, there has already been mixed martial arts competition, which ended in this very arena. We also had the judo tournament, which also ended just across from here, the Gamashin Hall, where today Taekwondo also began their competition and they will conclude tomorrow. But it's round three of women's quarter final three here between Liberia's Grace Zina, Fan Bule against Habiba Ali of Egypt. The Liberian won the first one. There she goes to Lance, another powerful there. She has been very, very tactical. She has been very good in this fight. And there she lands another powerful one. But the Egyptian quickly counters as we wind down the final 15 seconds of this bout and which will conclude women's light flyweight quarterfinal action of Accra 2023. Still, Fambule goes on attack and she lands another one right at the very end as the two fighters embrace at the sound of the final bell. And the Liberian has her coach, as you can see in your pictures. Wow, the Egyptian don't look, doesn't look so happy. She knows she risks a defeat here. the verdict and is going to bout review apparently now the results the winner for this bout is by four to three red and as expected, the Liberian has emerged victorious and the two fighters embrace there before leaving the round. Now we see the highlights of the final round. Oh, another powerful punch there from the Liberian who was declared a 4-3 winner after the bout went to review. She won all three now, rounds 3-2. Yes, so the fight, fight went to review. And, and next she fight came out on top for three. So we are done with the, the women's light flyweight quarterfinals. Four semifinalists have been produced and a match up their matchups set up. Jet one, Botswana, Jet two, Mauritius, Jet three, Bualam, Romesa, Romesa, Bualam of Algeria, who won the first fight, will meet Ramatukwe of Ghana's conqueror, conquerors, Yasmin Mutaki in the first semi finals. Whilst Zainab Adesina of Nigeria, of course, will meet. Grazina Fambule of Liberia, the woman who has just given Liberia its first boxing medal of Accra 2023 Africa Games. So we move straight on in this show as the quarterfinals of women's 52 kg, that is the flyweight itself. starts 
straight away. We have four all four quarterfinals in that particular category. Please, let's welcome the boxer out of the record. Coming to us in that from Algeria. consecutive order straight away. So we have now, Susa Miludi of Algeria in the red corner. You can see her Gaiza, being led to Gezadi, the ring. From Ethiopia. And she will take on Bethlehem Gaiza of Ethiopia, who is also arriving. Please, this women's 52 kg quarterfinals and for the fight number five. Number of this evening's session. To move your car. Once more, if you are the owner for this vehicle, GE 90863 Africa can Games. You move out to move your car. You are obstructing other people. Ghanaian Swamati Kwe unfortunately lost the quarter final matchup against. The vastly experienced Yasmin Mutaki of Morocco and is out of competition here at Accra 2023. Same as Sarah Apiu, who also lost yesterday. Abdul Baki Adam was the first Ghanaian to be eliminated when he lost on the opening boxing day that was Friday here. Yesterday, Alfred Kote, who was leading comfortably heading into the final round, was eventually stopped and also eliminated. But we saw four fighters qualify for the next round yesterday, and we again saw Mohamed Ayute and Samuel Techi. The highly rated, the man many things are expected of somewhere teaching defeat his Moroccan opponent in devastating fashion round one earlier this afternoon and he is through to the quarterfinals where he will face John Paul of South Africa. But under we can play is the women's 52 kg quarterfinals here and it's a clash between Algeria's Susha Miludi in the red corner against Beltelhem Gaiza of Ethiopia in the blue corner. The Ethiopian, not worried at all by her disadvantage in height, and she, you know, attacks her opponent there, delivering a flurry of punches and eventually wrestling the Algerian to the canvas. But she's up, and we continue with the fight here in round one. Women's 52 kg quarterfinals who gets through to the semi-finals oh a powerful right there from the woman from ethiopia she got the original rattled and rightly she is giving a standing count by our referee from zimbabwe all the two bosses and tago Rest each other to the canvas once again. Referee cautions them and instructs them to continue with the show. Gaiza of Ethiopia delivering some body shots, even as the two boxers. Got into an entanglement there. Fight continues. And the broken clearly 
not at the and another powerful right there from the Ethiopian who content to have scored enough points in this round. Decides to just run around at this stage, but he, she goes on the attack once again. Oh, beautiful footwork there from Gaiza of Ethiopia. She goes to work once again, and once again is him one punishment or another on her opponent from Algeria. And that brings us to the end of round one. Is Shusha Miludi of Algeria in the red corner against Bethlehem Gaiza of Ethiopia in the blue corner? Round of eight women's 52 kg flyweight boxing of Accra 2023 Africa Games. This is fight number five of this evening's action as we watched the uh, highlights of events of that opening round fight number five of this evening's show session of the day three boxing day three of the games africa's olympics they call it and I'm hosting for the first time ever. And we begin round two here. And we see the Ethiopian once again go to work and punishing the opponent. Gaiza Bethlehem. The woman from Ethiopia in the blue, proving that she indeed is a warrior. Not worried, not faced at all. And Miludi, once again, goes to the canvas after an entanglement with Gaiza. Left good left jab there from the Algerian who goes in with another right as her opponent tries to attack. Gaiza is beating so beautiful, great ringmanship. And there she lands a multiple combination again. She appears to have some power in her feet. And there she lands another one. Remember, the, OG, the Ethiopian is leading 5-0 from round one. And she's not doing too badly here in the second stanza. Shusha Miludi of Algeria appears to be rattled and really has here to really exert her authority in this fight. Just under a minute to go in round number two, and you can see the Ethiopian is beating some beautiful antics as she lands another powerful punch there to the face of Miludi of Algeria. Oh, beautiful. Exhibition of ring skills by Bethlehem Gaiza of Ethiopia. The action continues here at the Bukum Boxing Arena. Round number two. And the Ethiopian keeps delivering one good punch after another. Da. And there goes the bell for round number two. Here. 
at the Buko Boxing Arena, the heart of Ghanaian boxing. The heart and soul. The little community which has produced so many world champions. And once again, it's a 5 0 verdict by the judges for the woman from Ethiopia called Bethlehem Gaiza. She has been very terrific in this fight so far through the two rounds, and rightly so, she leads on. The judges scorecards having won the first round 5 0. All judges ruling in her favor, and round two, similar situation as we commence the final stanza. And the Egypt, Algerian decides to go all out, but once again. She has slowed down and one and, and the Ethiopian appears to be taking over again. Women's 52 kg quarterfinals, the first of four quarterfinals after which we'll be done with the women action for tonight. Then we move to seven men's fights before we wrap up fight day three of Accra 2023 boxing. It's still Bethlehem Gaiza of Ethiopia against Shusha Melody of Algeria. The Ethiopian leading comfortably at this stage and not in any trouble at all in this round three. So it's women's light, women's flyweight division, 52 kg, where Ghana's Adli Jabate will feature in the fourth quarter final. Looking for a spot in the medal zone against Tunisia's Chada Gilasi. Round three action continues, and we are under a minute now to end this first of four 52 kg quarterfinals as the Algerian tries to corner her Ethiopian opponent who wouldn't bite and has left the corner. And equally, as beating her ringmanship, her ring skills, her footwork, and delivering one hefty punch another or and another onto the body and face of the Algerian. Bethlehem Gaiza fighting from the blue corner for Ethiopia against. Shusha Miludi, the woman who comes from Algeria, she misses a, another punch there. And Gaiza immediately punches her as we hear the sound of the final stanza and the demeanor of the Algerian says it all. She knows she lost this fight. So we continue with the, we await the official verdict here. Coming up after this fight, let's hear the verdict.
winner of points by five to zero. Blue Giza Butler Gazan from Ethiopia. So a comprehensive victory there for the Algerian who also won the third round 5 nil and the fight itself 5-0. So, Ethiopia's Bethlehem Gaiza is true, is true to the semi-finals of women's 52 kg action. The referee for this bout is represented. We immediately await the second bout in the same division, the same stage. Next. Jet two, Seychelles. Jet three, Tunisia. Jet four, Egypt. Jet five, Algeria. Now, please, let's welcome the boxer up fighting out of red corner. Renda Zofa Macho from Tanzania. We move straight into action for our third fight. Sorry, our sixth fight of this evening session. And the second of women's 52 kg quarterfinals, which will feature Zufa Renda of Tanzania against Giselle Mwamba Nyembo of Congo DR. And Jojo Epson will take you through this fight. Yes, welcome to the Buko Boxing Arena, Accra, Ghana. Thank you, Prince Donuleku, for you know, giving his insightful commentary on boxing tournaments at the African 13th African Games in Accra. So, yes, this is uh, a Congolese <laughs> lady is very ferocious and hard at the speed. Again, the Tanzanian is going to be something else. Rwanda, Zofa so, so Rwanda in the red corner from Tanzania against Mamba Giselle Nyambu from. Democratic Republic of Congo and the women's quarter finance of the women banter weight 52 kilograms. Can you please tilt the light a little from the blue corner? Now the referees are inspecting and checking up on. against the Congolese. The Congolese was at the last African Olympic qualifiers and was very impressive. A very aggressive fighter. This 
some sort of East Central African and, uh, uh, tango. Congo share border with Tanzania. They will party Congo share border with Tanzania. The Congolese girl, Giselle Mwamba Nyambu, very aggressive fighter, it's again the Tanzanian, in red, Zufa Rwanda, in the woman, Bantam with 52 kilograms. first round or round one the Congolese Giselle Mamba Nyimbo against Rwanda Zota from Tanzania at the red corner. Women bantam with 52 kilograms at the ongoing 13th African Games boxing competition or tournament, if you want to call it that way. This is a highlight we just seen in all the first round of the two ladies slugging it out. You know, to make it to the next stage of the competition. That is the semi finals. Or oh, that's the medal zone. Yes. Now they are ready for the second round. The aggression on part of this women tell me something. Yes. The exchanges and then the techniques of the jobs tells you that as much as African you know women boss and have the potential we are still at a teaching teaching stage compared to what pertains in other part of the world. Aggression power you know, need to be balanced with technique. It's a give and take. A nice work from the Tanzanian. First round result seems to be going well for the Congolese. The first and Giselle Mwamba from Congo is leading three to 
here. You know, three of the guys scoring here, eh? and two score against here. It. It's actually from what we know of to be the favorite to move to the next stage. She did well at the African Olympic qualifiers. Naga Senegal. Nyambu Mwamba Izel. Rwanda. Yeah, like the give and take from the two ladies. Women boxing in Africa, you know, was introduced in the tenth edition of the of the games, which was held in. Uh, Which was heard in Maputo, Mozambique. That was where they introduced uh, women boxing into the competition. And yes, that's the end of the second round. And the give and take goes on here. So to it still look look a close call. But let's see the review and then uh, from the judges. The Congolese is still leading here. And it's 4-1 as I can, I can see on the computer screen. The highlights in here. Yes. Good job from the Congolese. The final round, uh, the round three. Yes, the referee is cautioning the Tanzanian for, you know, lowering her head, which is not, you know, good for the game because she could hurt her opponent. That's good. The Congolese seem to be following up to finish off. She's still leading though from the previous rounds. Excellent footwork from both ladies. Tanzanian against Congo. Women's banter with 52 kilograms. 13th African Games. From Bukom Arena, Accra, Ghana. Don't get yourself into such a area being cornered to his off.
Giselle Mamba Nyambo from DR Congo is still chasing and punching. That's the end of it all. Giselle Mamba Nyambo from Democratic Republic of Congo. That's a, in the red corner, in the blue corner, that's against her opponent from Tanzania, Zofa Rwanda. Excellent delivery from both ladies. We wait for the review and then the judge's decision for that matter, the results of this particular bout. So here we go. Now the result. The winner of this bout is by 5 to 0. The winner, Blue Nyembo. Yeah, not surprising. Giselle, Giselle, Mwamba Nyambo for Democratic Republic has won and won convincingly, massively, unanimously. She has, you know, dominated all the rounds. And deserve it, actually. So in the women's so quarterfinals, Bantam weights, 52 kilograms division for a place into the semi-final, the medal zone, of course. It's going to be Chelda Rebab from Morocco at the red corner and Renee Lore Ngweni at the blue corner from Cameroon. So it's going to be Cameroon versus Morocco here tonight. And coming up next after this bout is Ghana's tennis sensation, Adli Jabati. Adli Jabati, who comes on to complete the women's bout at the Bantamweight division. You know, for a place into the semi finals, she is coming up against her Tunisian op opponent, Chara Jelassi. So it's uh, Adelaide Jabati versus Chara Jelassi. Here she comes in. That is a Cameroonian. Cameroonian. Rene Lore Ngoeni. Against Rebab Chada from Morocco. In the women's banter with 52 kilograms at the quarter final stage of the African boxing 13th African Games boxing tournament coming to you live from the Bukum Arena, Accra, Ghana, watching live on GTV Sports Plus and affiliate the world over. I am Charles Jojo Epson, charge of communication at the Ghana Boxing Federation, managers of the national boxing team, and being supported at the commentary position by Prince Donald Leku, a boxing writer in Ghana, 
and highly acknowledge the world over. I can see the Ghanaian support. There's Ijali waiting for other Ghanaian contestants here. Led by the Eva Vosiros chairman or leader, Ibrahim Kansa, popularly known as Apiru Chakapama. Apiru Chakapama. Who, you know, have traveled the world over to support various national teams, not only the Blasters or just football. He's here to support the course of boxing in this 20 African Games 2023. And actually cherry known, especially when this turn of Ghana. Apirugu Chakapama, officially known as Ibrahim Kansa. Excellent. The Moroccan have a very good reach as against a well conditioned Cameroonian in blue. The Moroccan in red. She's Rabab Cheda against Sweeney Red. From Gwenin Renin Laura from Cameroon in the blue corner. Tomorrow it's going to be another. The, and athletics is starting in Ghana. Athletics is part of the Olympic qualifiers for the 13th African Games. And Ghana is expected to use it as a platform to see if it's possible to qualify as many as possible athletes, especially the men's for 100 by 4 really. And as the table stands now, Ghana seems not to be doing that bad. I believe Frog and now in the sixth position. With the help of the Mena Hall from the Amrezwe team, who you know, did so well. Amrezwe, though, is a new sport in Ghana. But with the effort of leadership led by the Chairs of CCB, General Secretary of the Sports Riders of Ghana. Who double as the president of the African Am Wrestling, Am Wrestling Federation has done so well to ensure that the sports, you know, take out that shape with regard to medal winning. And not surprising. Eight gold, 40, uh, 40 silver, and few bronze. At the end, of the round one between Morocco's Rebab Cheda in the red corner and Renin Laura Ngweni from Cameroon in the blue corner. In the women's 52 kilogram bantawit bouts, quarterfinals bouts. Seeking qualification to go to the semis. And as I said, up next is Ghana's teenage sensation, Adli Jabati. You know, who will be in the blue corner against uh, experienced Tunisian Chada Jelassi in the red corner. Of the goal for the second round or round two if you want to call it that way now as it seems it seems the judges call have made it 
3-2 in favor of the Moroccan. It's 3-2. Three, three judges scoring it for the Moroccan and two scoring. So the Moroccan is leading here but slightly. Very slightly. Coaching is more alone. Coaching is a serious feature in the women boxing. And slowly speaking, women boxing is still at a developmental stage in, in Africa. Apart from Madi Kadi of Morocco, who is in Accra here, uh, competing in the female heavyweight division, who has gone on to the world to win gold, the other Africans will find it difficult. No. The Cameroonian have just to manage the game anyway. The Cameroonian is trying to manage the game anyway. The second round of the seventh bout of the quarterfinals. Women's bantamweights, 52 kilograms. Between Morocco's Rehab, Rebab Chada, and Rene Lore, Cameroon, who is in the blue. Now, that's the end of the. Round two for the second round. So, on the score of the the Moroccan is still leading. Yeah, now what the highlights we determined the outcome of the score. Led 4 1 in the first round and now leading 5 5 nil. 5 0. So the Moroccan is still in a comfortable lead. For the final round, they are in for the final round. Cameroonian seems to be you no, know, she has been deducted because she seems to be some unorthodox approach in these bouts. In what we call in Ghana, take it the rough way, but it has, you know, very affected her with deduction of a, a point from her accumulated ones. 
Yes. There's a, 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 a punch from the Cameroonian has sent the Moroccan to the canvas rolling. She has received more caution than any other boxer within what we've witnessed you know, in this uh, three days of uh, fit cost at uh, the Buko Marina in Accra. Good swear from the Moroccan, who just now want to avoid and dancing around. Uh, Again, again, around the, the ring. She seems to be leading. That is end all. Oh, the Cameroonian did better, but unfortunately, got it added for something on Torres. You know, unsportsmanly, unsportswomanly like uh, uh, display in the ring. The Cameroonian, Rene Lore. Gwen against her Moroccan counterpart, Rebab Shada. Now, the verdict. The verdict. Now, the results. The winner of this bout is by. Five to zero. Red Cheddar Lover. Well, not surprising. The Moroccan has made it to the semi final, the medal zone, with emphatic five zero drabbing of her opponent from Cameroon. Of her opponent from Cameroon. Morocco. Are the defending champions of boxing at the African Games? The last time they hosted, they won and won massively. They won and won well. This afternoon, a Moroccan, you know, had a light weight division, men's division, was actually knocked out by Samuel Tichi. Ghana's wonder boy, Samuel Tichi. Africa's only boxing that we in the last Olympics. Knock him out. And in another contest, a Moroccan also won at the stage. Coming up now is another bout involving a Ghanaian. And that is the fourth Ghanaian, the fourth, uh, the third Ghanaian lady, you know, to go into the ring. So, and now, please, let's the, the Tunisian at the right corner is Shada Lassi up against a Ghanaian opponent, Adli Jabati. Adli Jabati. This banter with women 22 kilograms quarterfinals for a place into the uh, into the semi-finals. Adelaide is an 18-year-old product of Wisdom Boston G in Accra. The student 
an SHS student, senior high school student, senior high school student in Accra. And this is a Medin international bout. So let's see how Adelaide first. Let's see how Adelaide first. Spoken to her earlier on, she showed a lot of promise and determination. But it's a, another thing all the, all, all the same in the ring. So let's see what Adelaide can do against a much more experienced Tunisian opponent, Jada Jelassi. Adelaide Jabate.